Good morning. This is Trisha Bhakti for the print, and we are back with Lieutenant General Retired H. S. Panag to discuss a column from this week. Army is the only thing standing between Manipur and chaos. Time for government to review approach. Welcome back, General. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to discuss uh, my column with you, and this column is an important one because it deals with the current subject uh, as to what is happening in Manipur. Right. So in this week's column, you analyze the situation in Manipur and the violence that's been going on over the past week in the state. So to begin with, uh, why do you think that despite the dysfunctional state government, the center hasn't imposed president rule and rather left things in the hands of the former CRPF chief Kuldeep Singh? Uh, you are aware that uh, to impose president's rule under Article 356 uh, is a political decision. It is generally taken by the central government based on the recommendations uh, of the governor of the state. And then that state is declared a disturbed area and Armed Forces Special Powers Act also uh, get um, uh, uh, applied there, uh, if required. And now, uh, since it's a BJP government in power, so the center also has a BJP government. Uh, so... Uh, politically, it's the tradition. It has been the tradition in India that uh, in, uh, central governments are reluctant to impose president's rule in the states in which uh, uh, their own party uh, is in is in power. And uh, the other underlying reason, which has not been stated, because the violence is by and large on ethnic lines, but it's also the fact that the Matai majority, it's a thin majority, it's about 53% of population of Manipur, uh, they're all Hindus. And the Kukizo tribe, as well as the Nagas, uh, who are about 48% of the population, 24% each, 20 24% each, uh, they are generally uh, Christians. And about 7% are other minorities, Muslims and others. Uh, so this is uh, another factor. So it's a political decision. But all ingredients uh, was uh, uh, president's rule because of uh, the state has not been able to maintain law and order are there. Uh, 4,000 plus weapons have been stolen. Over 100 people have been killed. In any other state, uh, they would have uh, president's rule would have been imposed, particularly if it was the ruling party was from the uh, from the opposition. So, how do you think the volatile situation in Manipur is allowing for the revival of insurgent groups, and how do you think this will in, uh, affect India's security? Uh, you see, uh, Manipur has a long history of insurgency. In fact. Uh, the overflow of Nagaland insurgency, which erupted uh, uh, in uh, uh, Nagaland uh, in 1956, uh, had its spillover to Manipur because uh, the eastern hills, uh, especially those bordering uh, Burma, are uh, populated by the Naga tribes. In fact, the entire leadership of the uh, NSCN, I am, which is the predominant Naga organization today, asking for Nagalim, Greater Nagaland and all, uh, is from the tribes, which are Tankhul tribe, which is located in in in, uh, uh, in Manipur. Uh, then, so that spillover began very early in the 60s. Then in the 80s, there were two more groupings that, uh, you know, st started taking part in the, in the, uh, in the uh, sort of uh, uh, insurgency. Uh, that was... Uh, the Metais, uh, they had a, a cause, you know, based on Metai nationalism, because they said that they have been an independent entity and they did not agree with the accession instrument signed by the king in 1947 or 48. Uh, so they also took up arms. And uh, then the Kukizo tribe, which has, which occupies the hills to the north and south of the Impal Valley, they had a number of insurgent groups. And the army was battling all these three insurgent groups in the 80s. Uh, but uh, gradually, uh, the, the, the sort of the cause of uh, uh, separatism, uh, that is to break away from India, uh, it uh, kind of uh, uh, reached a dead end. 
the 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 insurgents also realized that it's not possible to challenge the might of the indian state and then they saw the benefits of uh, uh, joining the indian uh, uh, mainstream so the nagas were the first to sign the agreement uh, in 1997 ceasefire agreements which was extended to manipur also then uh, the kukizo tribes they signed an agreement with the government in 2008 uh and the mitai insurgents they they generally went uh, were, they just uh, uh, disappeared you know they became dormant uh, they became dormant uh but they all these ex insurgents they were resorting to extortion in a big way and most of the extortion was taking place in the imphal valley so this is the situation and one more thing that i want to add is that under both these ceasefire agreements that were signed with the nagas and the kukizo tribes the insurgents have got established camps where their all their weapons are stored and these are guarded by assam rifles and the paramilitary military forces uh, and the weapons are kept there and some of the insurgents also also uh, stay there and they are accounted for and they are also all of them are given a monthly stipend uh, by the by the government so now uh, that uh, the the uh, there is ethnic strife between the metais and the uh, metais and the metais and the uh, kukizo people nagas have yet kept out of it uh, for the moment uh, so there is a likelihood that they may rejoin uh, the, the the insurgents may rejoin and make a common cause with their ethnic communities Uh, right. and in fact look like um, saviors instead of being extortionists which they have been which they have been for the last uh, you know uh, almost two or two, two decades uh, they 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 will probably become a saviors of the community and to that extent there is a possibility that uh, they may break the agreements and uh, they have not done it so far they may they may they may uh, sort of uh, and uh, loot the arms from the from the various camps which have been established uh and and come back to in a kind of insurrection against the government as i said secessionism as a cause uh, as run its course it is no longer a predominant cause for any of these people but uh, as a insurrection against the legitimate government elected government it can happen and uh, the first signs are already appearing uh i have mentioned in my article one this thing which happened in the in the south of the imphal valley where there were armed insurgents uh, uh, that uh, uh, battled the battled the uh, bsf and the assam rifles uh, in which uh, one assam bsf soldier was killed and uh, two three assam rifle soldiers were uh, injured that happened uh, soon enough i mean just after I, the day i wrote finished writing my article and then there has also been that uh, uh, meti uh, in, uh, insurgents now i would call them that dressed up in uh, paramilitary uniforms went to uh, uh, kukizo village to the north of the imphal valley and said on the pretext of uh, checking the uh, you know looking for uh, arms and all and then they shot dead uh, two three people uh, there so there is uh, so what what will happen is that these kind of uh, insurgents uh, they will probably be, form people's militia so the army will not be battling mobs uh, burning trying to burn each other as happened in the first phase of the violence which lasted which is lasted till about you know end of uh, uh, may and now with spor- sporadic incidents uh, the second phase which i anticipate uh, can happen would be more of uh, the militias would be participating and in doing so they would also get embroiled with the uh, security forces trying to enforce law and order right so what are some steps do you think the army or and the government has been taken or can take to kind of prevent these insurgents from uh, resurrecting again or these insurgent groups from resurrecting again and joining this violence in a sense and making it worse yeah you, you see Uh, there has to be some sort of a political agreement and that's why uh, even the home minister mr amit shah he has had appealed for 15 days uh, peace 
uh, you know, which will last, which will, which is, which actually the 15 days are almost uh, over to work out a kind of a, a, a agreement that satisfies everybody. But as I have written, that uh, the agreement, uh, uh, short of uh, 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 union territory or a uh, enlarged district council encompassing the entire um, the Kukizo areas, uh, it will not be acceptable to the Kukizo. And Metis won't accept such an arrangement also because it, it, will, it, it uh, militates against the idea of the, of, uh, of the, the you know, Mete nation, which, which is supposed to encompass entire Manipur. Uh, the Nagas also would, uh, would want uh, their share of the, of the, of the uh, cake in the sense in a similar arrangements as Kukizo. And they have already met the uh, Home Minister to appeal that no, no, no agreement should be made without taking the consulting the, the Nagas. Now, uh, for insurgency to revive, these, these people have to break the peace agreement. So the camps should be properly guarded and accounted for. And uh, the, there should be political dialogue, which has already been going on with all these, uh, with the NSCN, as far as the Nagas are concerned, and with the uh, Kukizo uh, uh, insurgent groups. Uh, that should be, uh, it should be taken forward. And they should be, refrain, they should be advised to refrain from um, taking part uh, part in all this. No, that is that is what uh, can be done. Uh, as far as the army is concerned, uh, you are aware that uh, army has uh, so far handled it as an aid to civil authority problem. Right. And they have they have not, uh, uh, despite the chief minister himself saying that it is a battle with the Kukizo militants and Kukizo insurgents, terrorists. But uh, the army has cate been categoric, both the chief of defense staff, uh, General Chauhan, and as well as uh, army chief, uh, General Pandey. And the army's response was uh, very prompt because luckily the erstwhile insurgency grid was still in, 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 in place. A SAM rifle, that was not disturbed. It shows the foresight of the central government and the uh, armed forces. There is a full-fledged division, which is the reserve for the... Uh, you know, northeast uh, uh, for the China border. It's also located in Nagaland and Manipur. So 130 columns of the army, you know, it's a lot. That's something like eight to 10,000 troops were, troops were used. And uh, they were able to bring down the violence and uh, bring in a semblance of order. In addition, they looked, they had to handle about 40,000, 36 to 40,000 um, displaced persons, 21,000 people took shelter in the army, army, army camps. They had to be had to be looked after, and then the army had also faced number of difficulties. I think that we can discuss subsequently. So you mentioned that the current situation in Manipur has probably been the most challenging aid to civil authority circumstance that the army has faced. So why do you think uh, this current situation? What makes this current situation different? See, normally, uh, when your army comes in aid of civil authority, uh, there is generally mob violence, uh, you know, or in communal rights or uh, or some for disaster uh, management and all. So, in that case, there is not much problem. The moment the army appears in the in the uh, there, uh, the, the uh, curfew is imposed, and they, very very little violence takes place thereafter. Army doesn't ever have to take action in terms of very rarely has the has the army itself taken action to fire on people, etc. You know, this is uh, this this has never uh, happened uh, in, in in our experience. Uh, except on very exceptional circumstances or very rare instances. But what happened in Manipur is because there was ethnic violence and the communities were intermingled both in the Imphal Valley as well as uh, at some places in the hills and particularly in the, in the, as, as the, the transition areas between the valley and the, and, the, and the hills where both communities were there. So one was that the... Uh, army had to ensure separation between the two communities and they were unrelenting. They were unrelenting. Uh, the second was that there was an attempt made um, 
in the Imphal Valley, as well as at some places, probably by the Kukizo uh, people, to stop the army columns. Now, this has never happened, but women have formed lines in the in the in the in the streets and all. Uh, at times, this used to happen in Jammu and Kashmir quite some time back when uh, women used to come and lie down on the streets um, uh, to prevent the army from approaching the area where terrorist uh, operations were were going on. But here, they were caught, they were there was deliberate attempt made by uh, the the local people to stop the army column from reaching the areas where arson or you know killings were uh, were were taking place so army and then uh, it's uh, in such a situation the army only acts on the orders of the magistrate it is though armed forces special powers act is in vogue except for 19 police stations in 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 manipur but army is not cannot take uh, shelter under the armed forces special powers act in this situation because it is operating in aid of civil authority and that a magistrate has to be present and this itself may have been a problem in the initial stages that the, since the, the government, state government was acting in a partisan manner, uh, availability of magistrates and all could have posed a problem. But what I read is that about 20 magistrates were made available to the army, but the area was vast and maybe 20 were also uh, in, uh, inadequate. Uh, the, the other thing that uh, is that a large amount of arms and ammunition has been stolen. Yeah. Now, in all other cases of air to civil authority, you do not meet up with people firing back at you. The army has to accept the fact that they can be fired upon and people are attacking each other with weapons. So in the in the crossfire or because in trying to quell the situation, the army can also face you know the 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 fire of the of the uh, people or of the militia groups as they may be. Uh, they may be formed uh, uh, in in the future. So this is indeed a very uh, uh, a challenging situation for the army. But I think the army uh, is absolutely impartial, and uh, uh, there were attempts made uh, by the both by the Métis as well as by the Kukizo. The Métis feel that the Assam rifles are pro Kukizo people. The Kukizo people feel that it is the other way around. Uh, in fact, uh, when uh, the Kuki uh, police chief was uh, removed from command, in fact, he he was acting as a bystander, uh, and he is an IPS officer, and uh, so he was uh, he was uh, uh, not even taken by the home minister along when he visited uh, the various uh, various areas. I mean, he had no role to play. He was made. He was made ineffective, uh, and then he was removed from uh, his appointment. And his brother, who was the next in line, uh, was also not made the DGP. And a third person, much junior to them, was made the DGP. So Kukizo people retaliated by putting up twenty-one names of Metis officers who are in the security forces. Uh, both in term in Assam rifles as well as in in uh, in uh, in um, uh, uh, army as well as uh, and 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 in in the in the in the CRPF and BSF. Now twenty one officers' names are put on the internet. So and for the first time in its history, the army had to uh, actually say that it acts in an impartial manner. And whether the officers are Métis or whether they are from South India or the North India or anywhere, uh, they, that they will act in an impartial, impartial manner. You are well aware that when the army moved into for Operation Blue Star, uh, the overall person in charge was uh, General Dial was a Sikh. The commander, General Brad, was uh, of the division that took part was a Sikh. A number of Sikh soldiers also took part. So the army uh, is absolutely impartial. It it is non-partisan, and it, but it had to, it had to go on the social media and publicly um, affirm this that they are they are impartial. So these are the kind of difficulties which the army has faced, and which I also mentioned earlier while answering the previous question that in future when we may encounter the uh, militias, uh, the first signs of which have already started appearing uh, for the looted arms and the insurgents that come as saviors that. 
uh, these these problems may become more pronounced in terms of actual restoration of law and order because in the crossfire the army will get caught and army will have to fire on them like we do in the normal normal insurgency right to end the column discussing the need for a review in the approach towards northeast so what do you think that could look like and how do you think that would prevent as you mentioned a second round of violence in the region that you are anticipating see northeast as you are aware the seven states have uh, got very complex uh, 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 problems uh, first is the within the state itself there are the hill tribes and it's not one hill tribe there are number of tribes sub tribes and they have been battling uh, plains people as well as amongst themselves over you know centuries uh, so it's a very very deep uh, rooted uh, rooted problem uh, as far as uh, this is concerned and then is the influx of the uh, of the people from bangladesh and erstwhile east pakistan which has come into this area and these people belong to the muslim faith and consequently they were making the they were uh, at places they were outnumbering the locals so this was the root cause of the problems in assam and so this has is overall uh, a very a very deliberate a secular uh, approach constitutional approach has to be adopted and the interests of the tribal people uh, which have been traditionally protected even in british times they were protected and some people say wrongly uh, but uh, they have to be have to be uh, you know taken care of while a lot of uh, people have got you know absorbed in 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 india itself in fact uh, the service industry is dominated by the people from the uh, the northeast particularly in the tourism and in the uh, hotel uh, segments uh, so uh, but uh, unless the tribal aspirations are met they will always be a problem then the lines that were drawn of these states were were not uh, would not it and they cannot be also on tribal lines because the tribes are distributed all over the place uh, now affiliations are also there mizos are down below kukizo people are um, you know they considered an offshoot of the mizos so they want a greater mizoram the nagaland nagaland uh, nagaland itself uh, was formed to to look after the in interest of the nagas but nagas say look the the manipur nagas uh, we want nagaland we want a greater nagaland then there are some nagas uh, areas in assam they say we want those also to be part of us so it's a very complex uh, uh, issue and uh, uh, the local governments have uh, you know been uh, uh, as typical political governments they side they 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 generally side with the you know the winning the winning side at the center so when congress was in power most of the areas were under uh, uh, you know congress coalitions or people who supported the congress and then when bjp came to power and block some of the states just went over to the bjp uh, so now uh, now and with the bjp's ideology Uh, of hindutva uh, it's also making its presence felt in assam it has uh, because of this they have made big gains in tripura uh, they have uh, made gains but uh, the tribal population is mostly christian so that brings uh, it brings a kind of a, a, a communal angle uh, that's why you see uh, uh, the, the, this this underlying reason for uh the struggle between the metis and the kukizo is also religion though as i said ke the so far it is all ethnic violence but it is also also uh, also religion uh so this uh, as part of the hindutva culture play has has not been has not augured well and manipur is a classic failure of this policy a classic failure of this policy uh yeah. and it's not necessary that the center is giving directions for this policy or the bjp is in, it is just that because of the overall environment in the in the country where this sentiment has been exploited uh, for for to gain 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 votes uh, similarly the local politicians have have uh, got into this and if uh, if we do not have proper 
secular constitutional governance in, in these areas, uh, there is likely to be trouble. And Mizoram, um, Mizoram uh, even Tripura, uh, Assam, and everybody can get sucked into it. And it's a very deep-rooted problem. You have seen the battle that was fought between uh, Mizo uh, police as and as, as, as and, and and the and the Assam police. It was on on the border, so a pitched battle was fought. So uh, uh, that kind of an approach is uh, is, uh, is is required, and the local politicians also must rise above. Uh, uh, you know the, the the looking after the narrow sentiments of a particular community, and uh, if we follow that approach, and maybe as I said, uh, certain amount of autonomy granted to the tribes, I think that's that that's the that's the way forward. And uh, last but not the least, as I said, that till such time, um, uh, a kind of these uh, in Manipur in particular, an agreement is uh, a reconciliatory agreement is arrived at. Um, the army has no choice but to pull the politicians' chestnuts out of the fire. Yes. That's what it has been doing. That's what it has been doing. The politicians spoil the situation, create an insurgency environment, and then the army has to has to step in and, uh, and do the needful. Right. Well, thank you, General. I think you brought up some very interesting points about uh, the situation in Manipur, firstly, what the government and the army has been doing and can do to prevent what you anticipate as a second round of ethnic violence, but also uh, gave us an insight into the integrities and the complexities of the Northeast. So I think, so for viewers interested in reading the full article by General Pana, the link to it is in the description below. Thank you and we will see you next week. Always a pleasure discussing my column with you.